Hello my friends, then get some booms in their chats and welcome to this walkthrough of the tech skies with Mr. RJ TV. Hey RJ, how are you doing? I'm good, how are all you guys? <laughs> uh, back home from Spain and um, I feel a little bit browner when I left than when I left actually. To be, um, so Spain, so Spain is Europe's equivalent to Florida here in the states, huh? Basically, we we kind of go a lot of Swedes go to Spain and uh, it's kind of to Greece and Bulgaria and stuff like that. Many European here in Sweden, we never get that heat, so it was uh, was amazing to be back and all uh, to be there for ten days and also amazing to get back uh, to uh, yeah to get a real life started again. So, uh, my friends, we're going to go through the text, guys, for the Football Fever Tournament starting uh, Monday, 25th of June. And uh, we, uh, as always, going to take uh, all the divisions and try to explain um, in as detail as possible without uh, talking for hours. So, and uh, before we start, I would really like, uh, like to shout out for a thing that we have been starting now this tournament. is that we have opened some messenger chats for the various divisions. It means that... If, uh, if you want to be talking with the people uh, and players in the same division that you are playing with, uh, then you can just send us a message on the Team Golf Clash Tommy page and we will add you to the messenger chat. And the messenger chat, there is no rules, it's just that share your shots, share the scorecards, have fun and uh, share the tournament experience with other players. So... It's time to start, and I think I'm going to drop the ball directly uh, with hole and number one, par four, and I want to hear how we can reach this one, uh, this green in two. All right. Well, I would bring the extra mile, and I would uh, when I set my shot up, I go full top spin. Depending on wind, if you got a wind at your back, you might want to take a bar or two off because you don't want to go straight into the rough up ahead. But 90% of the time I play this hole, I go full top spin with my extra mile. Again, I'm talking to rookies, so extra mile five, you know, around that area. Uh, if you are using a special ball, which I would recommend using a special ball, I would go with the ball that has some side spin. And I would put full side spin, full, I'm sorry, full right side spin, full right curl. Try to land that, put the extra mile as far out as it'll go to that red line. Put your curl on your side spin, your top spin, curl it to the right. That'll set you up for a nice, easy second shot. Usually you'll be using your wood, um, and I follow the black line still as well. Um, sometimes if you use a special ball or if you have a lot of curl, you might be able to squeeze in with an iron. So I recommend bringing the Guardian and the Saturn, if you have those clubs. If not, just make sure you bring a club that has a lot of backspin for that second shot. And also when you aim it, you'll notice that it takes kind of a high bounce. So something with a decent ball guide as well. Yeah, you, you explained it so well because that way of playing applies on basically every level. Of course, with an amazing amount of tailwind and especially masters, but also in expert, you will be able to put yourself a little bit closer to the green. Uh, but then we're talking with a berserker or a snow globe or a turbo ball. But in the end, or in general, we need to hit that uh, fairway. Uh, to just explain a little bit more about the fairway, you can't see that on the picture, but it slopes a lot from right to left. And that's why we want to have the side spin to the right and the curl to the right to kind of straighten the ball out so we don't get pushed out too much to the left. Because that is the thing, like, if you get pushed out too much to the left of the fairway, even if you get to the top of it, then you will have a very long shot for the green. And then it will be a tough um, tough birdie to, to get. The green works uh, in a different way. You, kind of, you can go long on the green because it slopes down. So you can basically fall back down kind of close to the pin even if you go far. So don't be afraid to go too far, but at least uh, put your drive on the fairway uh, and get your birdie and go from there. So we take hole number two and hole number two has been a uh, part three that has been featured in four or five tournaments. And I don't blame the game makers for putting it there because it's hard. It's so hard. So I want to hear now, Mr. RJ, can we make an hole in one on this part three? 
Oh, absolutely. We got a straight shot here. Would I expect a hole in one? No, but with a straight on shot like this, uh, it's definitely obtainable. I would recommend, uh, I like personally the backbone and I aim a little bit below where you have the black box. I generally, depending on wind and rookie, I don't think wind should be too big of a factor, but I don't put top spin or back spin on. And usually I can get my ball right up there by the hole. Uh, I would go either Navigator to knock down the wind just a little bit or Quasar if you want a little more control on your side spin when setting up your shot. Uh, what do you think, Tommy? Yeah, I would say that uh, I play it a little bit differently. I play, uh, and that is mostly because uh, when playing from the second tee, you do get some higher wind and uh, I like to use either an upgraded sniper or um, an upgraded guardian to go with max backspin kind of aim for as you can see the black box on the on the picture the, to bounce there have this uh, have the second bounce to be right at the pin because the green sorry the fairway slopes down just by the green so we kind of need to counter for that with the bounce as headwind in downhill fairway is going to be stopping kind of close uh, comparing to other type of wind. The thing that we need to have in mind here is that the ball will be affected more by the wind. We are playing over open water and that is one of the aspects when it comes to adjusting for the wind on how much the ball will be affected by the wind. So I would, for an example, if you do have five miles per hour as um, just an example, then I would adjust for it to be six. To just have that little extra room uh, and also crosswind put one bar side spin to the other direction so you kind of counter for that kind of the key as you can see on the text guide when you read it the key in the end is to have the ball to get as a straight uh, bounce or straight shot to the fairway as possible so you are not finding yourself in a trouble to bounce yourself up to the left or up to the right and get into the rough so it's a it's a very technical hole uh, Masters, you play with the rocket or with a quarterback. Uh, for a prone expert, you play with a sniper or a guardian. Uh, you play with a wood club, I would say. So, uh, so yeah, that was hole number two, and I can just agree with you there, my friend. With uh, with it is absolutely possible to make a hole in one, but you should not expect it. Um, hole number three, a lot of text on this hole and we discussed it a little bit before we went on here. Uh, so now I want to hear how can we manage this eagle? Well, you know, Tommy, first I had extra mile, then during your stream I scratched it out and put quarterback in. I asked you about quarterback before we started recording this and, you know, you had mentioned a big topper and, and it just made this hole, it took it from you know, scary to kind of exciting, you know? Um, so I would go with a power ball like a Titan. And uh, if you do have a big topper and you're playing rookie, I'm assuming it has very little accuracy. So take your time, make sure you hit perfect. Don't be afraid to put the full top spin on. And in doing so, if you nail this drive, you're going a lot more control follow up and jumping over that little uh river there to um get you really close to the pin and on the green um for this particular shot i would probably recommend a titan if you can afford it and rookie if not uh maybe a quasar yeah uh, and that that will with a big top of there it's uh, kind of the thing that i like to watch out for or like look for when I start playing a hole especially on part five is there any way for me to stay away from having to overpower my drive because especially on a hole like this when we do have the trees in the middle and the rough on the right we have rough bunkers on the right rough bunker on the left as well and we know that if we put ourselves there we will not be able to reach for the green too no matter what type of wind we have for our second shot so it's very, very important to be uh, finding ourselves in an easy way for our drive. Then we can overpower our second shot because it's easier to just land the ball on green in any in some way. But 
the drive is very crucial to at least give ourselves an opportunity to reach for the green in two. I uh, normally, when I do have side wind or tail wind, I go right side because that put myself up for a straight second shot. If I do have headwind, then the left side is the only way to go. And left side, I mean black line, right, right side, I mean white line. And so that will be the thing that decides for when, where I will play. If I play masters, for an example, and I have sidewind, then I will go left side. If I have tailwind, then I can go right side. Because, but pro and expert, right side with sidewind or tailwind, uh, and then left side with headwind. Second shot, you can go for the rough bump by the green. It's a tough one, really tough one, but it is the best way to get an albatross. But you can also go with the, a little bit more conservative or conservative, but an easier way for the albatross. Uh, no, sorry, easier way to just land it on green for an eagle is to bounce it over the water with a couple of bars backspin. So, ugh, hole number four, and this, in my opinion, is an albatross hole. Do you agree? Ah, I mean, it's definitely possible to get an albatross, but me personally, have I scored one on this one? Not yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but I definitely agree with you because of how easy it is to get on the green in two. Therefore, you can definitely go with an albatross. As you can see, off of the tee, there's just one black line. There's not too many ways to play this. Um, and, and just as shown uh, by that first black box, even in rookie, I don't recommend laying up. Let's jump over that, uh, that little river there separating the two bodies of water. And to do that, I'd like to go with uh, some full top spin. Um, I generally play this with some right curl as well, full right curl, curl actual, actually, and full um, right spin on the ball because you will have a tendency of ending up in the rough, which could make it harder for your uh, your second shot. On doing those two things, though, with the full top spin, you should be able to, um, with a power ball, I'm also recommending a power ball here, uh, you should be able to bring a uh, iron, a long iron, and a wood, both with a lot of backs. Spin, a lot of backspin. Once again, you're going to have a hill there. So it just make sure you got a ball guide as well. And you'll see you'll take a big bounce. And I believe the back end slopes up so the ball could roll right back down into that hole and get you the albatross Tommy was just talking about. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I like this part five. I remember it from the uh, last time. It's, yeah, I think it was the Hollywood tournament when I played this one from Masters and I scored albatross on, on front and back nine. So I think that has something to do with that I do like it so much actually. Uh, but in the end, I can just agree with, we need to bounce it over the water. Uh, and the only way we need to lay it up is if we are having headwind in the way that we can't reach over or that we for some reason don't have the driver for it or we are picking the wrong driver for the hole. So, and from that second position, especially there when it comes to the black second box, I like to go by the rough bump by the green. And going with uh, Goliath, Saturn, Backbone doesn't matter, but you need to have two bars of topspin for that shot because you bounce it into the rough and it is a little bit uphill. So you need topspin and you need to be not going short in the rough, of course. That is a little bit tricky. It, it maybe sounds trickier than it is, but it's a very, very good way to make an albatross from that position. So we're going to go to hole and number five, and this is a part three where even I believe it's very tough to make on hole in one. So should we just lay up for a birdie or do we go for it? I say go for it. I don't really see too many obstacles in the way, in the way that I play it. And the way that I play it is this. With rookie clubs, um, I would take the black line and it would be a straight shot. However... I would move that square by uh, that black square back just a little bit. I like to use the rough bumps here. I would bring a quasar, and then basically right as you're on the rough, in between uh, the little patch of fairway and then where the main fairway meet, uh, meets the putting green, I like to just aim my hole there. And if you could set up the wind perfectly, I have hole and won this before. 
Uh, however, if you do have a very high level guardian, another way you could play is not a very high level, but for rookie, a higher level uh, guardian. Another way you could play or uh, Saturn would be the white line with full backspin. Yeah, and I can just um, come in with the white line as well because you can play two ways. One of the ways is how you described it and uh, go directly onto the green with a lot of backspin. Uh, otherwise, you can actually go with a long iron and therefore when it comes to rookie you need to go with either a, a, um, a saturn with a power ball uh, like titan or kingmaker or you need to play from pro and expertise you need to go with a long iron um, or uh, i would say a wood club will be the most thing to use of course in the pro and expert then you go for the rough bump you use one bar of backspin and bounce into that tiny rough just on top of the bunker that is a very aggressive line, but it is a way to get on hole in one. And especially with sidewind, then it's going to be kind of easy to hit that rough patch. But with straight tailwind or headwind, then I suggest go with the black line. Use a wood club with a good amount of backspin. And now I'm talking to pro expert and masters to get that bounce on that fairway just by the green and making the backspin... Uh, kick in so you make this one close to the pin and maybe you will make a hole in one with that approach and with the balls bandera ball for prone expert and bandera for uh, masters wind bandera when you see that on the text guide just take that real quick is that i mean a wind resistant ball with a uh, level five so we are more than halfway through now and now we come to hole number six a part four and how do we play this one well, for this particular hole, um, I go with my extra mile, shoot it right up the middle, just like the black line is showing with uh, full top spin. I have yet to run into the rough up there uh, in doing so with my lower level clubs and rookie. Um, probably would like to go with a power ball still. I know I keep saying power ball. Uh, be a little careful where that sand trap juts out on the left. You should be able to set up a bounce to go over it. Uh, just, you know, keep an eye on that. The more top spin you put on, the longer that first bounce will be. And then your second shot, I like something with a lot of backspin, and I still follow the black line. If you don't have a club that will suit you there, then I would go big dog just because you have all that curl, and I would follow the white line. Yeah, it's uh, hole number six, tough par four in the way that we need to make our drive on the fairway. Uh, but if we do that, then it shouldn't be a problem for us to reach for the green in two. And when it comes to the two ways to play, either white or black line, black line is the rough bump, two bars of top spin when you go with your wood club, and that applies on every level. And if we're having wind or we don't feel comfortable by going so, then we need to have a wood club that gives us a little bit of curl, but also some backspin so we can bounce it on the left side of the rough and the bunker and curl it in as according to the white line. And uh, the drive here, again, I will take that just to make that very, very clear. It's very important for you to put this one on the fairway. You will not be able to reach for the green into if you are putting yourself in the rough or to the right or to the left uh, or in the bunker to the right to the left so we come to hole number seven the last par three in the tournament and this one is uh, uh, it's it's a bumpy road uh, so how do we play this par three well here in rookie i think we have it made pretty easily on this one because we generally don't have winds too high i go black line all the way i've tried the white line and I just can't seem to get as close. You could go with uh, a backbone, um, you know, because I like the accuracy. It's easier to adjust for wind. I'd probably go with a ball that would knock down the wind just a little bit more just to help you. Uh, left, left spin, no curl, because with the left spin and the slope that aims your ball towards the hole, uh, you should be able to just hit it pretty much straight on uh, you know, without any curl, but with side spin and definitely have an opportunity at either a hole in one or a very short putt. Absolutely agree. It, this hole looks 
uh, more difficult than it is actually. It is still hard to make uh, make a hole in one, and of course, going by the white line, bouncing over the bunker will only apply a straight shot with the right amount of spin but the problem we have there is that it is very the elevation there is very tricky that you need to bounce it very high which kind of in many ways gives you that extra push from the fringe that is not the thing that we're looking for and then we have a bunker in the back that i've been landed myself a couple of times while trying that particular route and when I try those routes and I feel like okay like 10-20% of the time I do get that extra push from the fringe down into the bunker then I don't play that way then I play a more safe way because I would be so frustrated if that would be happening uh, if, if in a tournament game I decide the way to play uh, depending on the win right to left win I go right side left to right wind i go left side i know there is no line for the left side but it works exactly the same as the right side and that is because it's easier to play with the wind than against the wind and then it's definitely in the way that the spin is only the only thing that you actually need uh, if you're having uh, i would say wind that go, uh, goes like if you're playing right side we take that as a short example right to left wind uh, we say 5 to 10 miles per hour, somewhere in between that, then you should actually put one side, wing to, side spin to the right. The reason for that is that the ball, and I say that again because I've played this hole so many times, that the ball will come in to the left uh, with the wind combined with the push of the slope of the fairway, then you need to counter that with one bar side spin to the right, uh, and also putting one or two bars of backspin more than normally because you will basically get some kind of a tailwind push with your bounce. I know it's a lot, uh, a very technical aspects, but it's very important to have in mind. Otherwise, you will get a very strange uh, push to the left or to the right, and you will not know why. And so that is how it is. And when it comes to the balls here, go with a wind resistant ball five when it comes to pro expert and masters if you're not having that then we play with a regular kingmaker so two more holes to go and now we come to a fun one hole number eight i know this is your favorite rj so how do we play this one? Oh man <laughs> you know i've been hemming and hawing about which which way to go and and everything in rookie i think it's going to be straightforward we take the white line uh, I adjusted my notes, and uh, this would be a kingmaker. Uh, if any of the holes are kingmaker, this is definitely the kingmaker hole. You want the minus three wind. You want the uh, extra power and the side spin as well. And you're going to aim just beyond that sand trap because that's probably about as far as your club will take you with the kingmaker. Uh, put some top spin on to try to land right where that black box is, where the white line meets the black box to set you up for a nice second shot. And then for your second shot there, I believe you're still probably going, if I remember correctly, you're still probably going to need a uh, king, well, I'm not a king maker, I'm sorry, a uh, big dog, uh, just to make sure you have the distance. You'll probably put some backspin on it if you bounce over the water. Um, that might be the best way to go, because I don't think you'll have enough backspin to literally land on the green if that is an option for you very very tough hole uh, and i could just agree with you that the right side is definitely the best way to play if we have the win for it uh, everything can be changed with headwind if we do get headwind then there is only one way to play this hole in my opinion that is by following the black line and that is still not going to be a safe birdie for you because you need to lay up and then you need to use a wood club with uh, as much power as possible combined with a ball with as much power as possible a titan kingmaker and then need to try to bounce it over to the green we will see a lot of people making pars on this one and it's not that it's like it's not that it's tough to hit it to the fairway it's just that you need to hit it so far on the fairway to be able to reach for the green in two but the blue line, as you can see on the left side there, that would be a way to go, in my opinion, if you do have a lot of tailwind. Because that will, in the end, 
uh, put yourself in a position where you have where you will be able to go with a berserker or a snow globe ball to go like full blast all in uh, on the left side but in the end either headwind lay up according to the black line I, every other type of wind try to bounce it on the fairway on the right as rj explained to us then we will be able to reach for the green to take the birdie be happy with the birdie don't be sad with a birdie on hole number eight so we go to hole number nine last hole and we do have kind of a three line way here now as well and uh, this is a part five that can be tricky so how do we play this one um man this one gave me fits back in the hollywood tournament <laughs> Um, I would go with a ball with a lot of side spin and power, and I take the black line with the quarterback, and I use a lot of curl, top spin and left spin, to set me up right about where that second black box is. After that, I like to also ride the big dog coming on in and bounce it where that's uh, the last black box is and try to get it onto the green uh, I believe I can get it on the green in two if I'm remembering the correct hole here. I, my apologies. And uh, and then that should set you up for a nice easy putt. If not, if you have an accurate wedge, um, you know, you'll be able to go ahead and do a nice quick easy chip in. You're absolutely correct. You will be able to reach for the screen in two uh, with that layup. Absolutely. And that will be the common play if we're not having a crazy amount of tailwind. If we're having a crazy amount of tailwind uh, from second or 30, we are able to play over the trees and bounce it over the rough, over to the, if following the black, the white line, as you can see. We can also go for a hook shot, like a trick shot, as it's called, if we have that type of wind. But if we're not having that type of wind, we need to play it according to the black line. We lay it up as close to the rough on top as possible, using a wood club with as much distance as possible. Have in mind that the second shot is played uphill, so the, the wind is not affected, uh, so the ball is not affected by the wind that much. So if we're having headwind, for an example, then we will have um, less wind to account for as we are playing uphill. But in the end, take uh, just land this one on green, be happy with that. I, I would be very 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 amazed to see a couple of albatross in this hole and then you will uh, then you would please share it with me because it's very very tough and i'm going to play this one very safe and going to take my eagle if i'm having the straight shot for an albatross if i'm doing an excellent drive of course i'm going for the albatross but otherwise no so as you can see on the club selections Big dog, big dog, cataclysm, basically all the way, and titan and kingmakers, depending on the balls that you do have. So, my lovely friends, or our lovely friends that watches the uh, this walkthrough of the text guides, I know it's a lot of talk, I hope it made sense. Uh, it's some tricky holes, and of course, when it comes to the wind, tailwind makes everything so much easier, but I do... Uh, pray a little bit that we get some win that we had in the lo uh, last tournament where we really had to think about where to put our ball and not yeah. just having a uh, having a driver fest so you have any final thoughts about the holes rj um just one last thing it's funny you ask uh on that last hole there the quarterback i believe is very important for us rookies that uh that little figure eight looking well not figure eight but that little blob of uh of rough right in the middle of the fairway so many people hit that and they think they're going to roll out and they don't and your driver sets up everything if you want to get uh you know on the green in two exactly and the thing that quarterback has that extra mile doesn't have is curl and so that is that is like the the kind of a trick with the quarterback combined uh, compared to the extra mile extra mile level seven gets some curl but extra mile level five level six will not have that much curl and of course less in level four level three level two so the quarterback will be good there i i totally agree glad you, that you stuck that in in the end it so, happened to me so that's what i'm <laughs> to say 
So, streaming, I'm streaming basically every day of the week. I'm streaming uh, um, yeah, the rounds in every division. So I'm playing Rookie to Masters and going to be playthroughs with the correct tournament win out Mondays and uh, Monday and Tuesday, maybe one on Wednesday, depending on how it gets. Uh, how will you be streaming this tournament? Well, uh, I always forget to say this, and I'm actually remembering this time. I have a doctor's appointment every Monday, so... Uh, my Monday stream will be late uh, after 8 p.m., uh, but after that, I like to go on between 6 and 7, and I'd like to stream every day of the week. I may take the third day of the qualifier off, not 100% sure. Then, that sounds good. So, I say thank you, my friend, and uh, we will end this video by thanking you all for watching. And if you do have any questions, please make a comment in the comment section below. So, happy stroking to you all! Bye.